Well, welcome uh, everybody. Thanks for joining in today. We've got lots of folks still uh, popping in with us for our 415 quick shot for today. Um, I see we're at about 47 attendees, it looks like. We're going to 51. So folks are popping in. As folks are coming in, let me introduce myself uh, as we get this started. If you're new to STLP, my name's Jeff Sabalski. I had the honor and privilege of being the STLP chief enthusiast for the state of Kentucky, which means I get to help you bring this great opportunity to the students in your school. This is the STLP Quick Shot program where we take a focused look at a section of STLP, no more than 20 minutes, give a, a overview, and then we spend as much time afterwards hitting Q&A with the questions that you submit. So on your screen, look for the little speech bubbles with the question mark. That's the Q&A section. If you click there, um, it is going to pop up and give you an opportunity to submit a question that we'll get and we will I think I was probably muted that whole time. That's fantastic. Love, life is great, isn't it? Welcome to Thursday. I know a lot of folks are heading out to fall break this um, this week or next week. So thanks for jumping in. I know a lot of our friends uh, in some districts uh, are actually starting fall break today. So if you're joining us, even though you're on break, thank you so much for jumping in with us. What I had mentioned before was if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Jeff Sapolsky. Welcome to STLP Quick Shots where we take a topic, we focus in on it for 20 minutes, give you the information you need. In the meantime, if you have a question, please look for the the uh, speech bubbles up in the corner with the question mark. That's the Q&A section where you can submit a question. We'll hit our 20 minute mark and then we will move on. And I tell you what, if we have questions that take us past 20 minutes, I'll stick around as long as, as I need to. You take off at your leisure. I'm starting my timer on my iPad. 20 minutes goes right now because we are going to be talking about the STLP project toolkit. So if you're new to STLP, then you may be new to the STLP project cycle. And what we have done is we have taken our big three events. We have the STLP projects, we have STLP digital products, which is DPOJ, which is a whole other topic. And then we have STLP state. Those are our three big areas for STLP, we're focusing on the project cycle. This is where students come up with an idea and figure out a way for a technology infused solution to start working on that problem, to help their school, to help their community. Um, and they tell us all about it and you might end up being a state champion out of it. So the way that we get it going is we have organized a project toolkit for you that will take you through every step of the way. Uh, it's updated regularly it's whenever we have information. Right now it's in great shape for our first few levels, um, which is, as you'll see on the screen, we're going from level I all the way up to level four through the project cycle. And it's pretty straightforward. Right now, is the level I section of the year. This is the period of time where your students should be investigating, looking for inspiration. They should be iterating and implementing ideas to get their project off the ground. On October 1st, we'll open up our registration for regionals, which is where students give their elevator pitch um, at what we call the level one event. Um, level one, you'll see, is is an, is we say elevator pitch because that's exactly what it is. We're talking about students giving a confident overview of what their project will be, what they're going to work on it becoming over the course of the year, and they simply share their elevator pitch with some judges who connect with them online and hear their pitch, give some feedback. And then hopefully your students move on to level two. Level two is our semifinal level. Uh, the state, it happens at the state STLP championship, which is in April, April 19th of 2023. So teams that advance from level one judging and move on to level two will come to state, actually come to Lexington. Uh, imagine setting up a presentation space to give an update on where the project is, what they've been working on for the last several months. 
Hopefully from there, they'll jump ahead and be advanced to level three, which is the final judging section of the project cycle, where judges will determine who our state champions are in the K through five division, six through eight division, nine through 12, and the overall best technical project in the state of Kentucky, which is K through 12 optional. Level four, that happens post state because projects are something that students are working on all year just because they get to april 19th doesn't mean that their project ends often students continue working on their project implementing their project far beyond state some even take it all the way to ISTE, our international society for technology and education conference where we have been blessed um, to be invited to have our students present at annually uh, this year it's in philadelphia so it could be that if you have a state championship team, they might be getting an all expenses paid essentially trip to Philadelphia to present their project in an international um, uh, uh, realm. Uh, you know, lots of folks, teachers from all over the world come to this D conference. And one of the highlights is hearing from our Kentucky STLP state champions. So if we back up a little bit, in the toolkit, we really highlight why projects are super helpful, how they can fit in, into your classroom more than just uh, getting together with a, a team of students after school and working on something once a week. Uh, projects are really wrapped all around the concepts of project-based learning. It fits into deeper learning models across the board. It's something that we have been doing since 1994. So STLP is no spring chicken when it comes to deeper learning and project-based learning. And what we have provided for you here is essentially a boiled down to the basics, what you need to get everything off the ground. And we put it here in the project toolkit. A few of those things are, you know, there's some six main elements that you need to keep an eye on. Kids are looking to projects that are, are, are based around a challenge question or a challenge problem. What is it that they want to focus on? This is really what's happening now with that level I, is they're identifying things that excite them and get them interested in learning and figuring out solutions. And what exactly is the issue that they're trying to solve, help, study, um, resolve, or, or build a, a solution for? Um, it's also about sustainable exploration. It's about the students not just finding an answer and then being able to report on the answer. This isn't a report. What this is is a project that really takes them throughout the year and grows based on where it leads them. As they are researching, as they are discovering uh, areas that support their topic, they're branching out and they're finding new and different directions to go and they're gonna follow that. A big, big one here is student voice and choice. Students need to select their own project ideas. Now, of course, different grade levels were K through 12. So obviously it's gonna be times where we need to help guide our students a little bit to get them where they need to be uh, because this may for many of them be the first time they've ever even heard of projects or project-based learning, and we'll certainly help them get there. But in the end, the most effective, the most, um, the deepest of learning occurs in projects that have been selected by students um, and led by students. Now, team reflection is a big thing, and we have that built into our rubrics. Each step of the way, we have scoring rubrics that also are guides for your project, and having students take time to sit down and take ownership of those rubrics and look at the guiding questions that are in them so that they can answer them for judges. That's going to take team reflection and time for them to sit together and, and have a, a deep conversation about what their project is accomplishing and how they're accomplishing it. Now, addressing standards is pretty great for us because all of our STLP rubrics are based on the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology, um, so it's built in. We make it pretty full foolproof for you. Um, if essentially we can say that if your students are participating, particularly in the STLP project cycle, they're demonstrating all of the technology standards. So there's a little thing called the um, uh, Kentucky graduation requirements across the state. And one of the stipulations in there is to graduate to get a diploma in the state of Kentucky, students have to demonstrate competency in the use of technology. A lot of folks look at each other and say, "Where? Well, how do we 
verify that? What's our what's our plan for students demonstrating competency? Well, guess what? If you're participating in the STLP project cycle, uh, you can essentially you'll have actual um, uh, materials. You're going to have actual uh, evidence that students have accomplished learning and mastering those STLP excuse me, those Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology. And then, of course, the presentation experience. What it's about is students telling their story. There's that next level to, to what we're doing and coming up with solutions and researching and building projects is all part of it, but a big chunk of it is confidently sharing what they've learned with others through their presentation. Now, as I mentioned, the technology standards here are the seven technology standards if you're interested in these posters we've designed these posters to take the you know academic standards for technology and boil it down into student friendly language into i can statements and you'll see there each one of those circles is an area in that uh, topic empowered learner digital citizen that students will demonstrate and learn about throughout their their project cycle. If you want to get a copy of these posters, there's a link here in the project cycle, uh, excuse me, the project toolkit that you can download these for your classroom. A lot of folks do. Name another academic standard area where students actually know it. Right? So through STLP, the students are actually going to understand what creative communication is. They're going to be able to verbalize it and they're going to be able to demonstrate what it means to them through their projects. Pretty cool stuff. So let's back up. Let's look at each level individually. Right now, let's talk about level I. This is where most schools should be at right this minute. This is the investigation stage, the inspiration, the iteration, and implementation stage. This is where the brainstorming occurs. We have links here uh, under the resources that will actually take you out to where they can investigate. They can go out and learn about how to get started with project-based learning, uh, stages in design thinking, Take advantage of those resources, but also for inspiration, you can jump back and look at some of the presentations that our past champions um, have submitted, which is really great to get a feel for how uh, our STLP state champs have sort of reached the top each year. Not that it's about being a winner. Um, we know that through the process, our students are all um, participating and they are all gaining skills and knowledge that they don't get in other situations. But for here, um, there's a competition aspect. You know, bottom line is we're learning is great. It's all it's all uh, the competition and the trophies and the awards. It's all smoke and mirrors for learning. Um, but that competition side of it is kind of fun. And because of that, you have some ideas to get uh, inspired by looking back at past projects. Iterations are obviously things that we can um, think about how the, the one great example here that I love is this real world challenge builder from Beachwood Independent Schools, which really helps us um, take you through the process of coming up with your challenge and takes you through some exercises to get your project off the ground. Take advantage of that. But here's the implementation statement. This has been helpful, and thanks to uh, Russ Hockenberry and Jefferson County Schools who helped us come up with this idea of actually having students. This is that reflection part where they are now sitting here and they are actually going through our project is blank. Problem challenge it addresses is blank. We picked it because blank and the technology we'll use is blank. Filling this form out really helps narrow down the scope of these projects. It often will help because, you know, students are have fantastic ideas and they have tremendously, you know, large concepts of things that they want to try and do, you know, like end world hunger with their project. And sometimes doing it this way helps them narrow the scope down to something manageable, doable and achievable, um, but also it just helps them iterate um, exactly which directions they want to go in. Super helpful. Work on that level I project um, stage of your project right now. The big part of what we'll do is the level one projects. Level one being um, often also referred to as regionals in 
in the past, historically, what we do is we actually spread out and we have partnerships with higher education um, universities around the state, and we have nine different regional events. Um, now, in the last year and this year also, with various challenges that we've heard about and requests that we've gotten from districts and district leadership, superintendents, CIOs, uh, just that it's super challenging this year to get buses, subs, and get students out of the building. Um, and so we want everyone to go all in on coming to STLP State in April. So we are going to transition this year, 2022-2023, is going to be remote connections for our regional events. Students will not have to leave the building. You will present from your building using uh, communication uh, software like Microsoft Teams, Google Google Meet. We're, we're still determining which will be best for that. Last year, I believe we used Google Meet, um, but your students will simply get a time, get in front of a camera with a microphone to present whatever presentation method they want to use, website, slide deck, video, whatever they come up with to give their elevator pitch about their project idea, that's what they'll do. And they have no more, the whole process takes 10 minutes. Um, students have the opportunity to give their elevator pitch. And by that, we mean a very succinct to the point um, presentation about their project idea. Note that at level one, projects are not completed. It's just an idea phase. We're still at the point where they're launching um, they are in the first few steps of getting their project off the ground. So that elevator pitch is quite literally, we've got judges for just a few minutes. Let's convince them that our project idea is strong enough to earn a spot to move on to level two at the state. I mentioned before that we have a project rubric. The project rubric is right here. They have it. Your students have access to it. Encourage them to look at it. Um, we also have it as a Google Doc version there. You can link at the bottom of the page that is editable so students can use it to, you know, to self-reflect and write down. But inside that rubric for level one, the, the, it's so simple. This, this round, all the students need to do is be able to answer the guiding questions listed on the rubric. Okay. It's super straightforward. There's no secret here. We judges, you know what the judges are going to be looking for. Can you answer those questions? Do you have a response? How you present those answers? Completely, totally up to your team. Um, and include the STLP logo somewhere in your presentation, uh, your digital presentation, and you know you're earning points for those answers. Now, a couple quick things to hit on that. I noticed, you, you may have noticed that the posters, the Empowered Learner, Digital Citizen, those match the guiding questions. So the key elements of our technology standards form the guiding questions that will help students get through level one. So I wasn't joking around when I said that if you do project cycle for STLP, you are engaging with those technology academic standards all the way through. And now here's the thing. So after they give their presentation, which by the way, registration will close up November 1st, and then regionals week um, will be right the week before Thanksgiving break. Um, so it's looking like probably November 16th, November 17th um, will be our regional day. So you'll get an actual date. You'll get a link to a, um, a room where your students can connect to give their presentation at a specific time, judges will listen, and then they'll get scores given back to them that essentially give you three different pathways. The first pathway is the project is right on target. Um, they have answered the questions. They know what they're, they're excited about their project. They know what they're gonna work on. They just basically saying to the judges, get out of our way. We got a lot of work we're gonna do and we can't wait to get started. That's an on track project. It automatically is moved on to level two at the state. A not yet project means the judges have heard your project. They like your idea, but there's a couple of things that you need to work on before you're really ready to make that next step and move on to level two. So all of the not yet projects will actually get to submit responses to the judges using their judge feedback to say, here's how we're gonna adjust our project so that we're gonna be ready for state based on what you told us. 
And then the third category is sometimes projects just they get off on the wrong foot. Teams don't have a chance to meet. Uh, you know, an adult hasn't helped them find the rubric. They have no idea what they're in for and they show up that day and they are just they're not ready. And so that is a chance where judges will will give them a re review it, rethink it and reboot it. Essentially, the end of their level of this year's project cycle for that project idea, go back to the drawing board and come up with some ideas and do it again next year. Um, whether you do a new project or whether you build on this one that we have sent back to the reboot stage, that's your call. But those are the three areas. This is a sample and what's in the toolkit. This is a sample of the feedback that you're going to probably get um, with lots of comments from judges and some clear scoring that will help your students understand how they did. That's level one. Now we're going to take a deeper dive with level one. I think it's October 13th. We're going to really dive into the level one rubric and talk more about that then. So I would go back to the quick shots page, look for that date, put it on your calendar if you're interested in learning more about level one projects. To wrap up though, I do want to hit on the level two project ideas. Level two is if you've now, you've either were not yet and you submitted and were accepted to move on to level two or you were on target, um, these projects actually come to Lexington. And last year we had hundreds of projects that set up at Rupp Arena and we had judges come from all over the state. And the level two rubric is very straightforward as well. You'll see it right here. Um, it takes you through exactly what judges will be looking for. And if you you come that morning to April 19th at the state, you actually set up a booth, um, set up your presentation, give your presentation when judges come by. If you advance to level three, you move on in the afternoon, the judges will come back and talk with your team. It's very conversational. At that point, it's not a, a canned speech. It is really just convincing judges that you are passionate about your project um, and then judges will have everyone will have everyone come on stage during the award show at the end of the day and we'll announce who our state champions are in the k-5 through 6-8 through 9-12 through 12 categories now one little update that i neglect to share that i want to make sure everyone is aware of um, here back at level one so with the registration deadline, November 1st, registration will open on October 1st. For registration, it's essentially a working title for your project, your school, and the grade division that your project is in. That's all that you submit. There's no additional work that you do. It will essentially reserve a spot for your team at the regional event in mid-November. One thing that we've gone ahead and changed is we have upped the number of projects that schools can bring. Typically, each school was welcome to bring three projects, a fourth project if you're a gold status school. This year, we're all online, so let's do it. Let's go all out. How about this year? You can bring four projects, five projects if you're a gold status team. And if you were a state champion last year, your school can bring six projects. So that's something that's a little bit different. Other than that, the rubric is online. Registration deadlines are going to be set. Um, We'll keep communicating with you after registration happens to give you some tips to get you ready for the big event. Um, but bottom line, this is the project cycle and the project toolkit. Now, as we get closer to the SDLP State Championship, we will amend this. We'll add a few little additional resources to help you get ready for level two. Um, for now, level one is on your radar. Hopefully, level I is something that you can start working on with your students and they'll be ready to roll when it comes to regionals in mid-November. Okay, I'm at the 20 minute mark, just a smidge over. I'm gonna look here and uh, I think I've kind of, I've seen the questions that have been submitted in the Q&A and we've hit answers for each one of those. I'm going to say thank you and I'm officially gonna end the, the live broadcast. If anyone wants to stick around and have a chat afterwards, I'll be on here. Thank you for uh, tuning in to the Project Toolkit intro today. You can access the Project Toolkit through the STLP Supersheet by going to stlp.education.ky.gov slash supersheet, one word, and you'll find uh, all of the resources for STLP in one spot 
easy to get to the project toolkit you'll find right at the top with the link to go out and view this toolkit make a copy for yourself um, share it with your students all right thank you all that's our quick shot for today and um yeah thanks for everyone i'm seeing our numbers we're looking at about 65 folks that jumped on board with us today so we appreciate you and have a great day